No, it's my brain power. I'm worried about. BB Crazy Man here. In this video, we go back to the streets in the 80s with TJ Hooker in search of more classic TV goose for your entertainment. In this scene from the first episode entitled The Protectors, two cops are called in on a daily shooting. One of them being Hal Williams, who coincidentally played Officer Smith on Sanford and Son. Before the officer driving the vehicle immediately jumps out, let's take another look at their arrival. Notice that there is no one behind the patrol car as it's just pulled in. Hold it right there. Did you catch it? Let's take another look. Out of nowhere, there's a real police officer directing traffic, and he set up cones and everything within the two seconds it took the officer to get out of the car. Believe it or not. Let it drop. On that same episode, Romano goes through a strange metamorphosis right before tackling a bad guy. That's incredible! Can you guess what the TJ stands for in TJ Hooker? The answer after this next goof. In the episode, The Witness. Hooker and Romano chase a bad guy busting through a fenced off area into a concrete river where there shouldn't be anybody, and yet they pass what looks to be a camera crew. It almost seems as if they were filming us while we were watching their film. Strange, the bizarre, the unexpected. Believe it or not. Back in the 80s, no one ever wore seatbelts, even TV cops. Being too young to drive myself when this episode aired, I used to ride in the back of Dad's pickup truck down the interstate and thought nothing of it. Luckily, of course, nobody ever got hurt on television from not wearing seatbelts. Well, it did have more than a thousand miles on it. It's amazing it got anywhere without a gas tank, or at least that's what it appears. According to what I read on IMDb, it was standard practice back then to remove gas tanks before uh, crashing a car like this. If you guessed that TJ stands for Thomas Jefferson Hooker, consider yourself a classic TV expert. In the episode, King of the Hill. Romano and Hooker are dispatched in pursuit of a robbery suspect. They turn on the lights and shoot off in a burst of speed only to be passed by a civilian. In the episode, Blind Justice. Hooker and Romano are blocked by a station wagon in pursuit of a suspect. But strangely, the station wagon appears to be parked in front of Hooker and on the curb at the same time and back in front of Hooker. It's telling you the truth. You've got to trust us. There's nobody left. On the episode, The Connection. This drug dealer must have been sampling his own product because he keeps trying to put his mask on upside down. On the episode, Too Late for Love. While talking to Stacy, played by Heather Locklear, Romano's shirt says Assistant Physical Training Instructor, but as soon as he walks into the building, the word assistant disappears. Most of the automobile shots on T.J. Hooker were taken from outside in actual cars, or at least what appeared to be actual cars, but occasionally they snuck in one of those studio shots, you know, the ones where a vehicle is obviously sitting still and the film is the only thing moving, like this truck filled with teens in the episode Fast Lane. Which kind of cracks me up all the more when the driver takes his hands off the wheel as if the truck would actually move from its stationary position. And let it drop. On the episode, The Mumbler. When a social worker comes to the station house, her badge says visitor. But with the close up of the badge, the word visitor is nowhere to be seen. It's like I wonder if everybody was distracted by something. Also in this episode, they use the same shot from the episode Witness, you know, with the green car on the concrete riverbed and the visible camera crew. I guess nobody ever said anything about it the first time they showed it. In the episode Sweet 16 and Dead. Bad guys crash their car, but oddly the hood closes on its own and opens back up before exploding. 
You know, I have to say that cars used to explode rather easily on T.J. Hooker, especially by the fifth season, when the show moved to CBS. In the episode Partners in Death, Stacy and Corrigan just do a spin out and the car catches fire for no reason and explodes. And then in the last episode of the series, Deadly Force, bad guys shoot at a van's doors and somehow the van explodes. I wonder what was on the other side of those doors. Well, backtracking to season three, uh, excuse me. In season three's episode, Carnal Express. Hooker and Romano chase an undercover cop and pretend to pin him down with enough time for Hooker to basically ask him why he was running for the benefit, I suppose, of the crowd that shows up almost instantaneously. Was the crowd running alongside of Hooker and Romano the whole time, but we just couldn't see him? Where did they come from? You got a real smart mouth, wise guy. Well, it was just an observation. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's really funny. On the episode Blue Murder, Hooker and Romano appear to be the first ones to arrive at a crime scene. Score. But by the time Hooker simply gets out of his car and walks towards this classic car, there is suddenly crime tape on the back of the older vehicle. The mystery of the instantly appearing crime tape. What happened to the world? Where did it all go wrong? Hooker and Romano are in hot pursuit. Following them is an unmarked blue law enforcement vehicle that they later mistakenly pull over. But who is the civilian that casually passes them while they're in the midst of a high-speed chase? You know, some people get away with anything. In the episode Gang War, Stacy and Corrigan are pursuing this car when it eventually crashes into a furniture store. But the question is, did that car somehow go through them to get to the furniture store. I'm not sure. What do y'all think? Is it possible he could have missed that patrol car? No way. Not on your best day. On the episode Street Bait, notice that Corrigan is in his civilian clothes before the gang rushes out to try and save a girl from a deranged psycho. The girl happens to live in the bewitched home of the TV family to Stevens. Perhaps they sold it in the 80s. Notice that Corrigan is still in his street clothes. When Hooker gets knocked off the suspect's vehicle doing that grab onto a moving car bit he always did, Corrigan is now wearing his police uniform as if he did one of those lightning fast Superman type changes. A few seconds later and Corrigan is back in his civilian clothing. Believe it or not. Thanks for watching this goose video on the TV Crazy Man Classic TV and Movies channel where classic TV is loved and appreciated for the fun time it gave us all back in the day. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. Hit the like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Let me know what shows you'd like to see in the future. I may not be able to get to it right away, but it'll help me in planning out future videos based on what you the viewer would like to see. Also, if you're a lover of animation, then check out my other channel, Brady Cat Cartoons. There should be a link to at least one of those videos at the end, which you should be seeing by now. Oh, and if you enjoyed this video, I have a bunch of videos on the TV Crazy Man channel. Lots more goose videos and fun facts for trivia lovers, so check out the main page for lots of TV shows and classic movies you may have forgotten about. I'm sitting here pouring out a lifetime of knowledge and you're making light. My tires are older than you, Junior.